So is it true that the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus has elements of HIV proteins in it? That's the question we're going to be answering in today's video. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Mikola Rashek of Mirror Genomics and before we get started, please stay till the end of the video to find out how you can get free tickets to our upcoming COVID Q&A event. We have another one, those are a lot of fun, so we'll see you then. Alright, so what are we talking about? Is it true that there are elements in the spike protein that resemble HIV viral proteins? And the answer is yes, that's totally true. There are certain fragments that are found which have exactly the same amino acid sequence that are found in some of the HIV proteins as well. This was published very early on in a pandemic and this was uh, revealed by a very controversial paper at the time which uh, the reason why it became so controversial not is not because they mentioned that information that is very that's obviously anyone can see the sequence and confirm this the reason why that paper was so controversial is actually because the authors proposed that this might not be of natural origin and they got destroyed for it the reason why they made that statement is because they claimed that there's four of these sequences four tiny fragments within the spike protein that also resemble protein sequence they're very small they're just small fragments in two different hiv proteins and therefore because there's four of them in four different areas they said this cannot this cannot be just a coincidence they did get destroyed for that so this publication actually never get of got officially published it was only published as a preprint so it means it was not peer-reviewed and uh, they removed that preprint because of the condemnation they received for making those statements the reason why they were condemned for that is because the scientific community came to the conclusion at the time that this is unreasonable conclusion the reason why is because of the fact that the fragments that resemble those same sequences found in uh, viral proteins of, HI of HIV virus are too small and therefore it actually could be completely coincidental and it's true viruses can exchange information as well it could simply be convergent evolution so it's just and the reason why that might have happened is simply on the account that um, well viruses have to evade the same immune system of ours no matter what the virus is so there could be situations where more than one virus could have similar elements that help help it in terms of being able to fight our immune system so they were definitely condemned for that because these fragments were very very small so small that it was considered that it's totally plausible that this could be just coincidence so that's why that paper was infamous at the time However, the, why, why am I bringing this up is because recently another publication came out that showed that SARS-CoV-2 virus can infect T-cells, so T-lymphocytes. So T-cells are the type of cells that we made, we made a couple of videos on this topic. T-cells are the type of cells that can attack infected cells already, so they can clean up our body that, that way. And... Um, and it was shown that SARS-CoV-2 virus can infect these T cells and it uses, it doesn't use ACE2 protein for that infection, but rather it uses another protein in order to make a contact with T cells. That protein is called lymphocyte function associated antigen one. <laughs> I know it's, it's a mouthful or LFA1. And the reason why we wanted to mention this as well is because that's one of the proteins that, that indeed HIV virus also uses to infect T cells. So HIV is famous for being able to infect T cells and destroy our immune system. So this is not welcome news that we can now see that spike protein could be doing exactly exactly same thing. But they're using the same, same uh, access point, right? So that means that a lot of people now think, thought, hey, perhaps it's those same fragments that are found in a spike protein that resemble the HIV proteins that are used to infect these T cells, i.e. spike protein is used to infect these T cells. And that's actually not true at all. 
it's, uh, but before I get there, how does HIV virus infect T cells? So HIV does not use its own proteins to infect those T cells to interact with LFA1. Rather, it uses what LFA1 it interacts with interacts with it interacts with proteins called ICANs. So um, that oh, can you remember the name? So <laughs> ICANs. Those are and by the way, LFA ones. They're used by T cells in order to infect tissues or not infect and um, go inside tissues from bloodstream. So they can use LFA1 in order to exit bloodstream and go into the tissues where they have to clean up whatever they have to fight. And when HIV virus is made by cells, when the HIV exits the cell, it can incorporate some of the proteins that are found on a cell surface and those same proteins can end up on the surface of HIV virus. Some of these proteins that are normally found in our body are those ICAM proteins. And those ICAM proteins are then on the HIV. And that's how HIV uses those ICAM proteins to interact with LFA1. And that's one of the ways how HIV, this can help HIV virus to infect T cells. So does SARS-CoV-2 virus do the same? No, it does not use ICAM proteins, so it's neither a spike protein or the ICAM protein. Instead, it is actually one of the SARS-CoV-2 viral proteins, and it's one of the ORF proteins. I believe it was ORF7A protein. It's another viral protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, and it's that protein particularly, it resembles the structure of ICAM proteins, and that's how of SARS-CoV-2 seems to be interacting with T-cells and how it can gain entry. So recently I made a video on what kind of proteins or molecular constructs can spike protein interact with. Here in this, in this context we are talking about another viral protein of SARS-CoV-2 that can be used in order to infect our cells. The, the dangerous component here is, is that the cells that it actually infects are, are White blood cells, not good because perhaps it SARS-CoV-2 infection might be contributing to the destruction of the immune system to some degree. And indeed, that's what is sometimes seen with COVID-19 patients is that they actually have a reduced level of T cells. We did talk about that previously. Another reason why there might be a reduced level of T cells is because of T cell exhaustion. But here's another potential reason as to why we might be seeing the reduction of, of T cells in some of the COVID-19 patients. So again, not a spike protein, but another viral protein of SARS-CoV-2 virus that is used to interact with the LFA, LFA1 proteins on the surface of T cells and gain entry that way. So that's what I wanted to tell you about that. Okay, if you're here still with me, then let me tell you about the COVID Q&A event that we have coming up. So this is basically where we collect a bunch of questions from asked by people watching our YouTube channel. And then we answer those top 10 questions. And afterwards, it's open mic to the audience and anyone can ask any questions. All levels are welcome. You don't need to be an expert. And we do welcome all levels of questions as well. They're a lot of fun, so we hope to see you there. If you want to get a free ticket, please subscribe to our newsletter. The first 10 people who subscribe to our newsletter will send you free tickets, all right? We have another event coming up as well. This is for business, uh, business owners, program that they can offer to their employees. This is what we refer to as wellness, proactive wellness package. Me and two other experts, one in financial, financial expert and mental health expert got together and we basically teach all the different tricks about well-being and how can you make sure that you perform at your best. So we teach that, uh, we provide uh, seminars uh, so that people can use these tricks and then employ them uh, to their heart's content so that everyone can be as, uh, as basically productive and happy as possible. It's really our goal here is to shift things around a bit because we've all gone through quite a bit of trauma in the last few years for obvious, for obvious reason. We're coming out of pandemic. So this is uh, why we wanted to make sure we can do something about it. And uh, you can register for that for free. 
The website is moneymindDNA.ca and uh, it's also provided in the description. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me in beautiful Canadian Rocky Mountains and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone.